Welcome to the Cabrera Lab podcast. What's up? Nada. Today is an exciting day. Why? We are answering one of our viewers' questions as today's podcast oh, topic. I didn't know we did that. Yes. A lovely viewer named Michelle sent us a really interesting question. One of those questions that I think most people think doesn't have an answer, so we're going to give it a shot. Oh, okay. She asked. What is it? She asked, literally, the question, how do we know what is real? No. <laughs> <laughs> It's like philosophy 101 class me. Yeah, well, hopefully it won't be philosophy 101. No. Uh, I think there's a there's a, a less philosophical answer to that question that's that will be more practical and pragmatic to to people. That's good. I uh, imagine that's why the question was asked. To answer that question, yep. One needs to understand the entirety of science. The entirety, like all of it? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but we might need a little more time today. <laughs> no. One needs to understand a very important quote. Oh, okay. By none other than uh, Albert Einstein. I'm feeling very, like a lot of flair today. I'm not sure why. Flair's good. I, Albert Einstein mm -hmm. of the Einsteins. <laughs> he said, the whole of science is nothing more than a refinement of everyday thinking. And in that statement is so much wisdom and, and so much complexity around all of that because the whole of science, first of all, is a really big thing covering a lot of topics, but underneath all those topics that are covered and all the things that people are discovering and all that kind of stuff, there's a basic algorithm to science. And that is science is constantly learning, it's, it's observing, it's looking for observable phenomena. There's things like transparency and other things that have to do with the this, this social, cultural aspect of science. But generally speaking, science is looking for observable phenomena and it's adapting its mental models to come up with the best mental model that we know of around that particular topic. That is, that is closest in alignment with reality. Right. Well, if you think about it, if you, if you have to walk up a flight of stairs and let's say you have a blindfold on, well, that limits your ability to sort of see reality. So you're gonna have a much more stumbly time getting up the stairs, right? right. So because your mental model that you're building isn't in alignment, as, as much in alignment with reality. Right, because you have one less sensory input yeah. of data. Right. Right. So that's everyday thinking. Everyday thinking is we've got to be in alignment with reality. Otherwise, we're going to get our ass handed to us. Yeah. It is a very pragmatic thing to understand reality. That's not philosophy. That's science. Mm -hmm. And by the way, science isn't what esoteric academics are doing in labs with white lab coats. Science is knowing reality. Mm -hmm. That's all science does. It's just tries to get good at knowing reality. So that's about as pragmatic as it gets. That's not a Parisian coffee shop philosophical conversation with the beret and, and the cigarettes. smoking cigarettes. That's that's like that's like the most pragmatic thing mm -hmm. in the whole world is science. Right. It is the most pragmatic. In fact, I'm going to go all over the place here, but Kerr Lewin said there's nothing more practical than a good theory. And what he meant by that is when we have a theory like the theory of evolution or the theory of relativity or, you know, Newton's theories or whatever, those are theories that are proven by, not pro we don't say proven too much, but, but for the general public, they're effectively proven. They're mm -hmm. factual, right? Mm -hmm. A theory isn't a hypothesis to a scientist. A, a theory is something that is absolutely empirically derived, that's empirically supported. Empirical meaning there's research, there's studies after study after study that proves this thing is, you know, for all intents and purposes to the general public, factual. Interesting. For all intents and purposes for the general public, proven. Right, but to most people, theory means like a guess. Yeah, that's theory and not, hypothesis are almost synonymous to most people. To to the general public, I think that's true. Theory and hypothesis are the same thing. You know, they, mm -hmm. they go, well, that's just your theory. No, right. the theory in science is the 
end-all be-all of science. A theory in science is empirically supported right. to the point of being like there's almost no doubt to a scientist, you know, we'll always leave open yeah. a window of doubt because yes. we're always open to learning more stuff. But yeah, it's a theory is like there's a hand in front of my face. That's a theory. Right. 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 And there's observable evidence. There's observable yeah, evidence there and not just one obser observation. There's many observations right. that lead to something being called a theory. Right. Interesting. So what Carl Lewin was saying is there's nothing more practical, more pragmatic than a good theory. Yeah, because you can you can bet your bottom dollar that a, that a theory is going to work. Meaning you can act upon it. You can, you can act, act upon, upon it as it. if it's true. All day. Act upon it until it's disproven later. Or yeah, and, and it modified. The probability it. is it's not going to get disproven. Right. It might get adjusted at the edges right. with tiny little adjustments, but the the core of that thing, if it's a if it's actually a theory, is not you know that that's a it would be a huge deal for a theory to be replaced. That's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. So we've kind of gone off a little bit to the to the question, but it's a it's a really deep question, and it's also not a deep question. It's it's very pragmatic every day, but it's also like based on some really deep stuff. So here's the thing: if if Einstein was right, which he is, that that all of science, the whole of science, is nothing more than a refinement of everyday thinking, then all of us are scientists. Mm -hmm. Then all of us are doing science every day because what else is there are you are you trying to live your life out of sync with reality like are you are you trying to guide your kids in a way that's not going to work are you trying to get your business to make money in a way that's not going to make money are you trying to you know have a, a marriage that sucks like right. is it are you trying to do that because wh why would you not want to be in alignment with reality right right so all of everyday thinking is science and science is everyday thinking we are scientists we're going through the world like scientists children are born scientists they're yeah. they're curious yeah they observe the world and they try to figure it out right? right so when you say scientists what what you i think you mean is we are going through the world and we are literally taking in data mm -hmm. we're making assessments and decisions and acting on certain ways every moment of every day to make decisions at the micro yeah and so when somebody says um when you say science is you know the is trying to get closer and closer to reality science is an approximation of reality just mm -hmm. like mental models are approximation of reality and Okay. Science is just mental models. That's all right. science is, is mental models that we have found are in alignment with reality. The most yes. the most aligned mental models in reality. Are science. Are yes. science. Yeah. That makes sense. So if you look at Michelle's question, which is what's real? Yeah. How do I know what's real? That would get back to what you were saying about... Um, personally trying to refine my thinking, like you were saying the Einstein quote, over and over to try to get better and better at being in alignment with things as they are. That's that's how you know they're real, I think is what you're getting at. We're gonna take what we know. Well, in science, that's called the literature review, mm -hmm. right? Yep. A literature, a review of the literature the, yep. on the topic. Well, in everyday thinking, that's what do I know? Like, what do I know about my kid? What do I know about my wife? What do I know about my business? What do I know about my yeah. health? What do I know? Like, I'm going to take that into account, my experience and all the things I know. Right? Yes. Well, in science, we call that a literature review. Yeah, you're just getting it's a like, lay of the land. You're getting a lay of the land. What, the what do all the scientists who have ever studied this, what have they concluded, right or wrong? What, you know, what have they said? What have they found? All that kind of stuff. So we're going to take our past experience and what we know today, and we're gonna use that. That's that's what Einstein was saying, right? In mm -hmm. science, we call that a literature review. In in everyday thinking, we call that what we what we know, right? Or what we think we know, yeah. Right. So we're gonna take that. We might we might read. In science, we call that you know reviewing the literature. Yes. In everyday practice, we call that reading. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? just, like just to get information. Yeah, get information. Yeah. What, 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 what do other or people research. say about how to do sit-ups? Yeah. You know, I'm, oh, I'm going to Google how to do sit-ups, you know, mm-hmm. or, oh, I, some people are saying we shouldn't do sit-ups the, old, the way we used to do them, all that That's kind true. of stuff, right? Yep. So what do we know? So you could do reading, you could go on your past experience, that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Then you're you're gonna have, uh, you know, you're gonna observe, mm-hmm. right? Well, you might not have uh, the time and the and the and the techniques and the methods of Jane Goodall, yeah, who the was of one of the great observers of, yes. of history, mm-hmm. studied primates, mm-hmm. did it for years. That's science. Yeah, you can observe. Your kids, you can observe your wife, you can observe your your customer, you can observe, you can pay attention. Right, and everything that you observe is actually data. Yes. So I don't know if people always correlate observation with data, but observational data is a real thing. I can sit and watch 10 people do the same process over and over again, and that's data because 10 out of 10 did it the same way versus, you know, eight out of 10 did it one way and two did the other. Well, that means my data is 80% are similar and 20 are different. It's all yep. the same. And you can ask questions. Yes. And those questions are based on, you know, what you observed and what you uh, what you read or what you knew from experience, right? So you can ask questions. Well, in science, we call that hypotheses. Yes. Right? Yeah. But in every day, you can ask questions. Mm-hmm. That's cheap. Yeah. It's cheap to ask questions. Learning how to ask good questions is a real is a real talent, right? Mm-hmm. I and mean, we're seeing that in AI today. The, just the just the skill of prompting is essentially like question asking in a in a in a prompty kind of way. Um, so asking questions is a really powerful thing that we do in the everyday. And then getting answers mm-hmm. through observation, through reading, through those kinds of things, right? Yeah. And then of course you can set up experiments. In science, we call them experiments, yeah. and they have controls, and there's yeah. all kinds of validity and reliability, and all this kind of stuff, and the independent variable and dependent variable. But, but in everyday life, you can set up experiments. You can say, "Hey, I, th- I, I think this person's mad at me." I, I always use mad at me because I'm ADD, but, <laughs> but uh, Joe's mad at me. Mm-hmm. Well, how would I know if Joe's mad at me? I could ask a question, but maybe Joe will lie to me. Yeah. Right? He might go, no, 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 I'm not. So then I'll do an experiment. Like, you know, okay, let's ask Joe out to lunch. Oh, yeah. And Joe says, no, I can't do it today. And then I ask him the next day. Oh, no. And then I look at, oh, three days in a row, Joe said no to lunch. Mm-hmm. And prior to this, he he uh, we went to lunch every day. So that's your data. That's my data. Your data. Right? I'm, I'm doing a little experiment. Yeah. Because your hypothesis. Because I asked him and he wouldn't. He, I couldn't get the answer from him. So you know, if if I can just be direct and say, "Hey, Joe, are you mad at me?" You know, whatever. Yeah. You know, whatever it is that I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. Right. So, you might not have the the sophistication of an experimental design, but you can do tons of experiments. Yeah. Right. You can you can, for example, take a a dirty sock and. Put it in your kitchen and see how long it takes your kids to pick it up. A long time. It'll take a long time. That's an experiment, right? (laughs) That's true. That's funny. Right? Yeah. You can do all kinds of experiments. You can do little thought experiments, right? Mm -hmm. Like Einstein did. Einstein actually did what are called Gedanken experiments, which are thought in German, thought experiment. Mm -hmm. And so you you kind of think through a little experimental design, you know, in your head. Yeah. So you can do that. And you can do that anywhere, anywhere about anything. Finally, you can do in science what we call a meta-analysis, which is you take all these different pieces of data and you mm-hmm. bring them together into a meta-analysis, right? Yeah. Well, you can do that with all the things I just mentioned. You can say, well, you know, I did this little experiment. I asked a question. I did some observation. I read. And, and all of these things point to the same thing. Right. The same conclusion. Mm-hmm. My reading points to that conclusion. My questions that got answers point to that conclusion. My observations of people point to that conclusion. conclusion. My little experiments that I did point to that conclusion. Right? And therefore. And so the my meta-analysis mm-hmm. is, yeah, that's 
that's about as close to reality. Now, all of that that I just described over the last five minutes, mm -hmm. that could happen in 10 seconds. Yeah. It could happen in 10 minutes. It could happen in 10 hours. It could happen in 10 days or it could happen in 10 years. And that's what Einstein's talking about. I it's see. just like, to what degree are you going to have controls? To what degree of validity do you need? To what, right? So if you have a year and a million dollar budget and a team of people, well, then all of those things that you're doing to figure out reality are going to be slightly more sophisticated. Yes. Right? Yeah. They're going to be slightly more refined because you got a million bucks and you got a team of people and you got a year to do it. But what if you only have 10 minutes and no budget and it's just you? Well, you can still do all those things. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I guess what I'm taking out of this from what you're saying is that it's, it's a state of mind. To be scientific is a state of mind. Yes. To be curious, to be questioning, to be testing. <laughs> to observe. To slow yourself down, ask the questions, test the assumptions, see if there's data, observ observable data or other types of data, yeah. before you make a conclusion about what is the reality of the situation. Yeah, and, and to uh, what a meta-analysis essentially does is kind of triangulate. Like when when you do map and compass in the in the in the in the woods or in the mountains, you know, you always take a triangulation to figure out where you are. Because if you just take one azimuth, what you know, you could be a, a, a pretty big distance on that line. But if three lines cross, that that puts you in a, a little triangle that's pretty small. Right. And and you're you're in that triangle, and, and even um, even Da Vinci said when he was doing his uh, anatomical drawings, he would slice the organ in at least three different ways and draw it in three different ways. So he was essentially triangulating the yeah. drawings of these organs, right? Mm -hmm. And and so the you know there's nothing magical about it. Three is a triangle, so it kind of puts it kind of zeroes in. So what you want to do is. Hey, I did some reading. I asked some questions, survey. You know, I did some observations. You know, observable. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, phenomena. I did a little mini experiment here and there, and then I brought all that together. You know, in my past experience, your lit review, right? Mm -hmm. You bring all that together, and they all point to the same place. Well, then you know, there's pretty good probability that's where you are. Those are your. That's findings. reality. Yeah. Yep. And then you can act upon that. Mm -hmm. And and the degree to which you've tested it will correlate with the degree to which it manifests the same way yes. in real life. So that's that the degree to which you test it, we call the I.O. loop, or the, the information organization loop. So you're getting information from reality, then you're organizing it in your mental model, then you're getting more information, you're testing mm -hmm. that mental model, and you're always, you're always fitting your mental model to reality, not reality to your mental model, which that, is called confirmation yeah, bias. That would be bad. Yeah. So you're always fitting your mental model to reality as you get new information from reality. Mm -hmm. And this is what science is doing, which frustrates the general public a lot because they go, oh, science is changing its mind. No, it's not really changing its mind. It's getting new information. It's getting yeah. new research. It's getting new whatever. Right? It's iterating. It's yeah. building upon itself, which is, I think, interesting that you have a you have a an initial mental model of something, mm -hmm. and so for example, you said Joe's mad at me. So that's your first mental model is that Joe's mad at you. Mm -hmm. Well, in order for you to know if that's real, you have to go out into the real world and test that. So yeah. first, you ask Joe if he can go to lunch, right? And then you use that data. Well, first I ask Joe, "Are you mad at me?" Oh yes, yeah, right. And you start with the real. For, the well, case. first I observe, and I'm like, "Oh, Joe's not looking at me." You know, yeah, Joe's kind of not talking to me. Yeah. Okay, now I, I know Joe from past experience. When he doesn't look at me, it means he's mad at me. <laughs> you know, so the, now I'm going to ask him the question that surveys in science, you know, yeah, or something yeah. like that. Hey, Joe, are you mad at me? No, I'm not mad at you. And, and he walks down the road. Okay, that's a weird response from experience. So now I'm kind of triangulating. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to do a little experiment because Joe won't tell me the truth. Or at least I think I have a hypothesis that yeah. Joe's mad at me. And now I have an additional hypothesis that... He's not telling me the truth about it, and which means he's probably really mad or hurt or something mm -hmm. like that. So then I'm gonna then I'm gonna do a little experiment, mm -hmm. and then I get the data on that, and then I bring it all together, and voila, yeah, you know, right. Joe's, Joe's pissed off. 
Well, or not, or not, or not. Maybe Joe's got like you know. Uh, Maybe jo- Joe's got a bunch of other stuff going on. Like, yeah, you know, somewhere else. Maybe Joe loves you, but Maybe is he completely quiet. Quit. I don't know. I mean, it could be a, a million things that Joe's happening. <laughs> Maybe Joe's just having a bad <laughs> he's day, just a bad but he's day. grumpy to everybody, yeah. and it's not personal. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, but I guess, I mean, the point, well, maybe, I don't know. But the point is um, we have to constantly be checking ourselves, checking it, checking yes. it, checking it, iterating our, changing our mental model, checking that new one. And that's, so, you know, that sounds real easy and real basic and real kind of like, oh, yeah, of course. But that's not what we tend to do. What we tend to do is, mm-hmm. here's what we tend to do. So we just explain what we need to do yeah. with the loop. Right. What we tend to do is, Joe's mad at me, and I find all the reasons that affirm my belief that Joe's mad at me. And therefore. And therefore, Joe's <laughs> definitely mad at me. <laughs> and, that is, and that's called confirmation yeah. bias, right? Because we're just, we're, just, we're seeking, we're, we've decided that Joe is mad, mm-hmm. and then we look into the universe to find anything that confirms mm-hmm. that assumption. And we essentially low light, we highlight anything that confirms it, and we low light anything that doesn't confirm it. Yeah, and but that's pretty much how, we operate. how a lot of people a lot of time operate, is like we just find the things that we assume. I think we do that a lot because we we want to be right. <laughs> yeah. Or it's just it's easy, right? It's easy, and you want to believe that you're right. Yeah. And so you look for ways to confirm that you're right. right. And until you, something happens downstream, which is a bigger problem, do you even test the idea that maybe you could have been wrong back there? And it gets worse. Yeah. It gets worse because we've now industrialized confirmation bias. What the hell does that mean? We've now industrialized it. It's industrial strength. Because what we've done is we've created echo chambers in our social media and our mm-hmm. all of our all of our signal. Right. has all been sort of confined to people that will confirm our bias. Right. So then we never get any signal other than signal that confirms our bias. Right. And then we can just be right all the time. Yeah. Until we have to pay the piper. And that's not going to be pretty. No. That's yes. when we run up against reality. Because reality is patient. Yes. Reality will sit around and watch while you confirm your own bias. Mm-hmm. And it'll keep giving you signal, and you'll keep ignoring it. And but reality is eventually going to come and slap you upside the head, and or slap us all upside the head, you know. And yeah. and it, and we're going to pay. Like there's no there's no getting around reality. Reality is, in fact, what it is, and you'll get feedback from it whether you're looking for it or not. Now the choice that you have is, do I listen to that feedback? Do I take it in? Do I allow it to change how I'm thinking about things? Or do I just, like you're saying, confirmation bias, push it back out because it's not what I want to hear. It's not what's... Yeah, when, which when you push it back out, all you're doing is delaying the impact. Right. But you're going to get the impact. It's just a matter of whether you're going to get it in little increments or all at once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not good. Yeah, it's Getting not it good. all at once. No. You can imagine, I mean, I can imagine you set down a path based on what you believe is right about something, maybe say a work initiative, I set down a path. Mm -hmm. I believe I'm right about what this work initiative is, should be, and what its impact will be. And I just steer everybody into my path. Yeah, that happens all the time. All the time. And then it's not until the end where I don't get what I want out of it that I stop and pause and I say to myself, oh, somewhere, somewhere along the way I went wrong. And then I have to go back. No, normally you're nor, normally what people will do is go, oh, it's Jim's fault. Oh, or let's fire Jim or Joe <laughs> or Joe because he's mad or at Sally you anyway. or whatever. <laughs> yeah, good. Joe's mad at me. Fire him. <laughs> That's normally what we do. We never take blame. That's right. I didn't. No, think normally we just be like, oh, that didn't work. Fire somebody. Yeah. That didn't work. Blame somebody. Yeah. Find somebody to blame. Right. Which again is just pushing reality down down the road, right? Mm-hmm. Cuz because you can fire Jim, you can fire Joe, you can fire Sally, you can get mm-hmm. divorced, you can you know, you can do whatever all the different things. Eventually, it's going to catch up with you. Yeah. Reality is patient. Well, and, and pervasive. Pervasive and actually 
it's communicating with you all the time. All the in time. In small it's ways. It's so wonderful. In big ways. It's so loving. Yep. That's the beauty of reality is it is literally always telling you about itself. The situation around you, whatever situation you're in, your business, your marriage, your kids, your health, mm -hmm. your physical health, all of those things are always telling you about themselves. Mm -hmm. They're always telling you about themselves if you will listen, if you will observe, if you will Jane Goodall them. If you will do that, they are always telling you about themselves. That, yes. Think about that. Your marriage is always telling you about itself. Yeah. That means if you listen, it's very communicative. Right. It's telling you about itself. Your work, your friendships, your physical health, yeah. it's always communicating with you. Reality is not some philosophical concept. That's I want to get away from the philosophy of this because I can't stand philosophy. You can't say that. I, well, I don't love philosophy. I mean, philosophy is, it has an important role to play. Yeah. But if we live in philosophy, it, it ends up being kind of a weird thing. We've got to get to science. Philosophy can influence science, and that's a great role for philosophy to play. Right. But you can't stay in philosophy or you get in these loops. You've got to get out in the world to observables yes. and pragmatics. And you've got to you, you've got to test your concepts. Otherwise, yeah. you get otherwise you're smoking cigarettes in Paris and 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 wearing Talking. a beret. Yeah, but I I think it's really important to say it's not just about um, questioning. It's it's before that making sure that you're not in the confirmation bias mindset because then you can question all you want. But what you were saying is all of those questions are just confirming and confirming. So you want to start at the very beginning these things this reality thing mm -hmm. is not esoteric no it's your marriage yes it's your kids yes it's your job you know mm -hmm. it's it's your physical health it's everything and those things are communicating all the time if you'll listen if you will be a scientist in the everyday like einstein was talking about not a, you don't have to do lit reviews and experimental designs and reliability and all that you don't have to do all that because you're not publishing right and you're not part of the academic establishment you don't have all you got to do is get it right with your kid all you got to do is get it right with your wife mm -hmm. all you got to do is get it right with with your physical health all you got to do is get it right with your boss or your job or whatever with your customer yeah that's what you got to do so be a scientist and listen observe ask questions think it through yeah meta analysis well, and those synthesize, whatever, you know, bring it all together. Yeah. As, it, those are big words, but, you know, bring it all, bring them all together yeah. into one, into one. Because the probability of three different sources pointing to the same solution is pretty low if right. that's not the solution. Right. So then the answer to the question is, how do you know what's real? What what that really boils down to is listening to the feedback that you're getting from reality, being open to that <clears throat> and taking it in. And then questioning along the way as you're building mental models, testing them against reality, coming back around and making your next mental model an even better approximation of reality. So that's the cycle by which you become. Depending on the degree to which you've got to get it right, right? If, you, if you're doing policy for the entire country, then you got to get it right. Yeah. You know, you got to you got to try to be in alignment with reality as much as is humanly possible, right? Yeah. Okay, well, then you're going to do slightly more sophisticated techniques. But really, at the end of the day, you're going to do a review of what we know. Mm -hmm. You're going to you're going to observe. You're going to ask questions. You're going to do experiments. Right. Yeah. And you're going to bring all the information together to see where it points. Yeah. Well, that is you. I literally just described the entire edifice of science mm -hmm. and also everyday stuff that you can do to make sure that you're, you know, approximating reality as much as possible in the quick and dirty way that we need to do it, because yeah. we're not going to do it in this super sophisticated no. way. We're going to do it in this quick and dirty way. Well, and another way to say quick and dirty is moment by moment, right? It's happening all the time. It can happen all the time if you're paying attention. I like quick and dirty. Well, I get that, but I'm just saying... <laughs> moment by moment like because you see we started with refinement of everyday thinking yes everyday thinking means it's quick 
how Every, dirty. <laughs> everything you're doing all day yeah moment to moment moment to quick moment. and dirty i just said moment moment to moment, to moment quick, quick and, and dirty. dirty all right <laughs> that might be mmqd you have to have acronyms for everything so it funny. makes it faster Fast. Uh, moment to moment's fast that's right that's what i'm saying you have to have that mindset Unless they're really slow moments <laughs> doesn't make it slow it if just makes longer, it painful. if you just extend the unit of momenthood <laughs> then they could be not fast you could have a moment that's an eon and then it's not fast i think unless that, you're a galaxy and then it's yeah, yeah. really not that i i sense that that might be another a separate podcast yeah, <laughs> the moment that is an eon yeah perceptions of time well mo moments are just defined by the unit of analysis right all right, so I think... Did we answer the question? I think we did, and I actually am... I'm. Ha what I'm, was her name? Michelle. Michelle. I'm impressed by that. It was a great question, Michelle. A good question. Good question. I guess one thing that I would say that I would say that I, that I hope people take away from this is that you've got to, we've got to stop thinking of science as this thing that scientists do. Yes. And we've got to stop thinking of ourselves as not scientists. Yes, that's true. We are all scientists. Mm -hmm. And science is not a job. Science is a demeanor. Science is a, an approach. Science yeah. is a, a way of being. Yes. It's a disposition. Mm -hmm. To be scientific in the world is simply to be realistic. Yeah. Literally realistic. realistic yeah. To, to be in alignment or be attempting to be as much in alignment with reality is to be realistic. Yeah. So... We are all scientists. We are all trying to get reality right. Our reality, our marriage, our kids, our body, our work, our whatever. Yeah. There's nothing philosophical about that. No, it's and ultimately practical. It's so practical. Yeah. It's ultimately practical. And it is ultimately every day. And I, I really, I just think this is really important that we, that we, that we kind of, there, there's this really important distinction that folks should make between science and academia. Mm -hmm. Because what's happened is the edifice of academia, which is a political and social edifice, right, mm -hmm. has, has sort of taken science as if it's theirs, and it is not theirs. Science is of the people. Science is of the universe. It is not the express domain of academia. In fact, there's a lot of academia that has absolutely nothing to do with science. Right. There's academia that's the game of academia, the game of publishing, the game of, of pretending to be smart. You know, that is not writing in ways that are so impenetrable that nobody can understand you. You know, all that bullshit mm -hmm. is academia, you could say, but that has nothing to do with science. Right. Science is an entirely wonderful thing. Yes. That is incredibly democratic. It is the ultimately democratic thing. Well, it's, and it's owned by everybody. And it's accessible to everybody. It's accessible by and everybody. And it's useful. And it's useful. To everybody. It, not only is it useful, it's the most useful thing yeah. that we've ever found. Yes. I mean, the greatest invention of mankind is science. Yeah. It's the most useful thing that we've ever found. It's the it's the thing that gets us to the truth of things. Yeah, that's all it is. And 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 the other thing I'll say is there is technically no scientific method. There is we, the, people think that there's this like express scientific method, mm -hmm. and there isn't. The scientific method is by hook or crook figure out reality. That's the scientific method. Yeah. By hook or crook, figure out reality. Mm -hmm. And the amazing thing about science, if you look at the history of science, is different scientists who are the greats that we think of when we think of science did it in different ways. They didn't all follow one singular method. That's right. Right? That's right. They true. did it in lots of different ways. But the one thing that they did the same is by hook or crook, they found alignment with reality. Right. They showed us something about the real world that was amazing. And they did it in crazy ways because they had to figure out how do I even, you know, Newton wanted to understand gravity. So he invented calculus. Yeah. Right. That's not the scientific method. The scientific method doesn't say like, oh, and then invent calculus. Right. Right. He needed to invent calculus 
in order to figure out this problem by hook or crook. Yeah. By hook or crook, figure it out. That's what science is about. And you could say that about the most pragmatic things in the world. Yes. Right? Sure. Farm equipment. By hook Anything. or crook, yeah, you know, make it work. Yeah. Right? That's a scientist. That's right. A mechanic, auto mechanic scientist. Yes. Figure out what's wrong with this car. Scientist. Yeah. Figure out what's going on with this kid. Scientist. Yeah. Those are all scientists, teachers, yeah. auto mechanics, you know, doctors, all kinds of people, mothers, fathers. It's being scientific. It's being scientific. Not just thinking of science as this pie in the sky, inaccessible thing, but yeah. being scientific yeah. and, and pushing yourself to better understand until you're satisfied the reality of things Yeah. by doing that. And yeah. don't buy into this bullshit that it's not yours. Right. It's yours. Science is yours. Yeah. As a high school dropout, I have ADD. I have, I have you know, uh, autism, all kinds of things. And I was consistently told that I wasn't, didn't belong in academia. Mm -hmm. But, and I didn't care because I love science. Right. Because I love reality. And, you know. Academia is a separate thing. Academia is a, a political and social function. It's not a science function. And academia does not own science. We yeah. own science. Yes, all of us. All of us. I think it's time to wrap. I think we actually answered that incredibly interesting and difficult question. And I want to thank you for sending it in. We'll know when Michelle says so. That's right. I'm sure Michelle, <laughs> we Michelle will get, let us know. Michelle will let us know if we answered the question. Yeah. And what else do we need to tell them before we go? Oh, we just found out Yeah, that we're in the 9% uh, uh, of podcasts in the world. I mean, top 9? Top 9% because of you. Thank That's you very me. much. That's awesome. That's great. We're very happy about that. And we're super, uh, super appreciative. So... Please um, tell your friends about the podcast yep. and um, share it. Comment. Do all that stuff. Comment. Like it. Like it. Ask questions like Michelle. Yes. Uh, Help yeah, us Yeah, we're grow. really excited that, yeah. that, you're, that, that you're liking the content and that, um, that we can, you know, help. Help us keep going. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's a wrap. Mm -hmm.